There are several papers in the literature that provide guidelines on how to create reproducible workflows, especially papers from the series 10 Simple Rules from Plus Computational Biology, like the ones we see here. What do these papers say? Let's have a look at the summary of the guidelines they provide. The first recommendation is to use open source tools, which means open source programming languages such as Python or R, and open file formats, for example, TXT or Markdown when we share text, or CSV when we share tables. Of course, we can also reproduce computations that run in proprietary software or that use data in proprietary file formats, but scientists who do not have access to proprietary tools will not be able to reproduce these results. The second rule is maybe the core of reproducibility and refers to keeping track of the results we create, in other words, of the computational provenance of the results which means that we have to store the original data and the code that produced the derived data from the original ones in open repositories that provide a digital object identifier, which guarantees the findability and permanence of our material. Then it is recommended to execute computations in electronic notebooks, which combine narrative and code to provide a story of our findings. It is also important to store dependencies that are the characteristics of a computational environment, such as version of packages, a type of used machine, and so on. And even more, we should share code and computational environment together, for example with Binder, so that anybody can rerun our computations anytime. And finally, it is important to avoid the manual manipulation of data, for example when using tables. Manually correcting data in a table, cancelling rows or merging columns is not ideal because we might accidentally lose or compromise some values without being able to recover the original version. To avoid that, we can automatically read the original data with some code and then tidy the data using packages such as pandas in Python or tidyr in R. And finally, it is always important to remember that we write code that is going to be shared with other scientists. So it is important to follow good writing practices, such as use variable names that are pertinent and document the code properly. One last thing to point out about reproducibility is that reproducibility does not imply correctness. We can keep reproducing consistent results, but for example, the code might have a bug. On the other side, lack of reproducibility does not imply incorrectness. For example, we might not be able to reproduce old results because we cannot access all the data storage or we do not have all the proprietary software now out of the market. But it is important to remark that incorrectness can be found with reproducibility. So, these were the main guidelines to create reproducible workflows. Now, what about publications? Let's talk about it in the last video of this playlist.